Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day in the world. Yeah, what up everybody? It's your boy Buggy, back with another podcast. Um, Like I say every time I do this shit when I don't really feel like making music, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm just here to talk some shit by myself today. Um, I guess and fill y'all in where I've been. I guess these podcasts every couple weeks are like a a stamp of where I am mentally and shit and where I'm going and what's been happening and shit. But um, right now I'm doing way better than two months ago, obviously. Um, if you listen to the previous ones, I explain obviously where I was at that time and I was dealing with a lot of loss and trying to understand what what life itself is. I was very depressed for a long time and I didn't know. I was forcing happiness, if that makes sense. But um, I switched my whole diet up. I quit drinking. In one of the earlier podcasts, I actually also say, like, hey, I'm only going to do these when I'm wasted. And that switched after the third one. <laughs> I quit drinking, switched my diet up, stopped eating fast food and all that bullshit. It's hard to stop eating bread, yo. <clears throat> bread I'm still having trouble with. But um, as far as sweets and everything else, all that's gone. I work out six days a week. And it's been like this for two straight months now, and I feel good as fuck. Like, even the diet as far as what I take in, like, as far as media goes. So if someone posts a story or article of a a beaten dog, that person is blocked right away. Like, I don't care how long I've known the person or how cool they are. Like, I'm not trying to see anything that... Puts my brain in this shitty bubble. You know what I mean? So if someone and it and you notice when you start when you start to block people, like for those reasons, you notice it's always the same people who are like putting out all this negative negative stuff. And it's probably because of what they're taking in and they don't even realize it. So and this is the thing too, I tried to stop scrolling. So I quit drinking. I slowed down the scrolling, my day-to-day use of media for whatever I use. I forced myself to make it be whatever I like, what I enjoy. So when you really focus on that, you notice you slip into these moments of just watching bullshit. And what I mean by bullshit, it's just like polluted, polluted, toxic shit. Like now, what I mean by now is like instead of looking up where this person is or what's happening politically or this or that, I look up how to cook this food this way or how to make this sound or something like that. You know, I really am forcing myself to distract myself. Pretty much, yeah, forcing distraction of what I enjoy. And in return, what this is doing for me is keeping me out of my own head Instead of thinking and dreaming about what I want and what I don't have and things that I don't have the power to change, I just use the power I do have, which is to focus on what I enjoy. And it has strictly changed my brain, I think, how it even is calibrated. My day-to-day speech and conversations are different. I'm actually talking to people now. And this podcast, me talking to myself and doing it with people really helps me as well. It shows me like my fallacies and where I can fix as far as communication goes. When we're communicating, we're obviously thinking of what our response is going to be and what we're going to say. But a lot of the times we don't take in what each other are really talking about. Like there's a deeper meaning and reason for a lot of the communication that we have. But when we're just so focused on responding, if both of us play that game, the weight of the convo is completely gone, and then we're just speaking to be heard, literally just to be making noise, not for a sense of connection or understanding or learning something. Like I've been using the reference like, if you look at the number, you can see it looks like a six. I might see it looks like a nine. Neither one of us are wrong. We're just looking at it from a different perspective. So that's what communication should be. It should be connecting all that. 
But when I canceled out the food and the alcohol, that was a big thing. So what I wanted to say was just because I stopped it, like, doesn't mean I don't want to get drunk. Like, I don't want to drink. Like, drinking isn't the thing. It's just that moment of being tipsy. That shit's fun as fuck. But for me to be healthy and work out the next day, being hungover is a bitch. So I stopped that. Not being drunk and hungover four days out of the week changed my diet inevitably. I wasn't craving the shitty food that I was craving. So for me, it stemmed from the drinking, you know. And then obviously it's a depressant when you really break it down. And um, I wasn't drinking when I was sad, though. You know, I was just drinking just to drink, like I said, because it was fun. But that's just not fun to me anymore, just getting drunk, you know, because I've been there, done that type shit. And now I'm at a point where I just want to be able to fucking run for more than 45 seconds and <laughs> being out of breath. I want to have abs that I never fucking had for real. So that stemmed from there. And then when I cleaned up my drinking and all that, and I and I wasn't still wasn't kind of happy and whatever. And I've been dropping nonstop content like podcasts. That's the thing too. Since then, I've been dropping five beats a week, one to two remixes a week, a single a week, and every month I'm dropping an official album and two podcasts and decipher to every month. So I'm really actually doing all this content that feels very good too it's like just I'm not holding on to anything anymore you know I'm letting it go and I'm letting it out but something else was still holding me back and I felt like still felt like shit that's when I did the media diet I anybody who posted anything negative that I didn't like gone and bro like the internet throws this shit at you like, it's the internet's, internet's a wonderland, but there's so much shit that can just make you hate your life. And it really does throw that shit. And they are listening, dude. Like, it happened last week. My girl Gina was here, and we were watching the fight. And she doesn't bet. She doesn't watch UFC fights and shit. But we were all talking about betting and parlays and shit, just talking about it. And she was scrolling on Facebook, and then, like... And a couple ads popped up for her to, like, download DraftKings or whatever. So, like, these motherfuckers are are listening to every single thing we do. This technology is crazy. So that form of communication, it's like, I don't even know if that's spying at this point. It's more of, like, studying. (laughs) Like, they're studying us. And, like, they, the top 1%, the podcast always go into that spot. But... I've been turned it in. I turned it all in on myself, not blaming where I was born, who I'm around. I just I've taken all accountability onto myself for being where I'm at in life. By doing that, you find so many hypocrisies in your day to day, day to day moves. And baby steps is the main thing. You have to just remember baby steps. The second you feel down on yourself, that's the second you need to do something right then and there. But just remember, just do that, that day and the next day, you know, and before you know it, two months have gone by like where I'm at right now. And now I'm in this routine where like I have to work out when I wake up in the morning. I have to drop this these beats on this day and this song, this no matter what, you know what I mean? And now instead of me sitting on four or 500 fucking songs, it's finally dwindling down to, to a a real core of the music I really, really love. Cause that's what I mean by dropping the singles every week. Those are quote unquote, my throwaways, not in the sense of they're corny. They're just throwaways in the sense of I don't have the rights to the beat or they're not going to be on a project or they're just going to be sitting in my computer otherwise. So I might as well drop them. What's the fucking point? Who cares? It's art. I don't give a fuck if anybody likes it or not. And that's how I've been looking at everything. And it's really, 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 really changed my my whole my whole outlook on everything, dude. It's just I'm just way deeper with shit now. And it's it shows in my music and how I write and what I'm writing about. Everything inevitably is some yin-yang, full-circle, life-or-death shit, even if it's a love song. Like, my lines are so poetically deep, and they 
but the way that I make them, they sound so simple, but they're for, if you ask me to explain one line in any song, I will tell you exactly what moment that came from, and it will make sense with other parts in the song. So, like, by changing my diet and stopping drinking, that was it. Stopping the scrolling and this robotic shit that we're sucked into right now, that helped a lot, too. So, like, I I think I'm here right now. Now the next step that I have to do is continue this and go harder. So that's the thing about working out. People who work out a lot and they take a break and then they go back into it, they know that when they get back into it, the first week is going to be easy as fuck in the sense of you can't do as many reps as you could when you were working out a lot. Duh, duh. So you look forward to starting to work out again because, again, baby steps. you know. So you can kind of trick your mind into getting yourself started. But once you're started where I'm at right now, two months in, there's no more rooms for like baby steps in the sense of what they were. I prestiged. So now my workouts where I was doing 15 reps in a set, because I do body weight workouts, now I'm doing 25, 30. So it's more intense. It's longer. And it's, you know, so it's still the same discipline regimen, but it does become longer and more broad. So that's the key right now for my life right now is the discipline of staying consistent. So I got the routine. I'm doing that. I got everything else set up for me. Now I just have to keep doing it. So hopefully in a podcast, a solo podcast next month, y'all will hear like, yo, look at this picture of me. And then, you know, like you'll really be able to see it hopefully by then because it usually takes like two months for the body to really show two, three months to show anything. But... Yeah, so as far as mental, I'm really screwed on straight right now. Um, and like I said, I quit drinking, but I that that doesn't mean I did. I drank like three or four times in the past three to four months. Like last night, I had to show up my band. I I drank a little bit after the show, which was fucking epic. But um, but yeah, dude, it feels really good. And now I don't really feel like a preacher when I'm talking to people. Because a lot of people come to me for motivation. A lot of musicians, artists, just anybody. Like, I, I, I'm kind of like a therapist. That's why that, That's why my, one of my nicknames is The Reverend, like Buggy The Reverend, because I'm always preaching. But it's because I genuinely want to see growth in people. And by me telling people my fallacies where I really go wrong with my thinking, whether it be insecurities or, or whatever you want to say, like, I need to let people know that because I need to know how they feel and how they dealt with it because they might have a better method, you know? Like there's different ways to fucking shoot the basketball. There's different techniques and releases and shit. So like I want to know all of it. So that's why I want to talk to all people. That's why I want to make every genre of music because I really want to connect with everything. And that's the thing, too. I think I said on the last podcast, I explained how I make music to connect and communicate with people. But I realized when I did the self-reflection that I wasn't even talking to anybody. I was hiding behind the music itself. I didn't do this last night. Last night, I made it a point to enjoy the show instead of being the show. Do you know what I mean? Not the center of attention. I don't mean being the center of attention. But as far as the curator running the event, making sure everyone's having a good time, I focused more on that than just enjoying it. Whereas I could have enjoyed it at the same time. You know what I mean? I would busy myself with running around instead of communicating, like having in-depth convos with people. And last night I actually hung out with people and it's fucking, that's the how you're supposed to do it. I wasn't doing it. And I don't have anxiety. I wouldn't call what I was doing before anxiousness or excitement or anything. It was just literally me thinking that this is what I have to do. I have to be running around like a chicken with my head cut off so that everyone can have fun, you know? And at the end of the day, I made a little bit of money here and there for the shows, but I wasn't having fun at the shows. And I wasn't connecting, like I said, how I should have. But last night, I did that, and... Yeah, and when I talk to people who come to shows, like, about this, they say that they, like, like, they understand it, though, like, and 
like they preach about my shows how they're different than every other showcase. So there is something to that, me catering to everyone. Like the second I see someone seems upset or needs something, I ask them what they need. Do they want to come backstage? Anything, you know what I mean? Anything to, to make their mood better. But yeah, so as far as that goes, I think I figured that out. I strongly suggest y'all, if you have people, if you get stuck into scrolling every day, every morning, try to steer away from the motherfuckers that be posting negative shit, whether it's political or... There's a lot of negativity in politics and sports even. Like, there's so much negative shit in sports, they don't even care. Like, I understand that's part of what selling the fight is, like, like fighters when they talk shit. People like drama, and that's a natural thing in our body, but that's what I'm trying to, like, block, you know? Like, we are animals. We have these instincts when it comes down to it. We do have that fight-or-flight response. But, I don't know, man. Shit's weird, because we are fucking animals. So having this conscious conscience and trying to break it down and be, like, good people... And un like don't don't commit sins and shit. But then if you do commit sins, if you quote unquote repent, it's okay anyway. So like this upside down world of what's okay and what isn't is really hard for us to navigate. And the internet has extremely opened our eyes faster than ever before. Like generations and stories. Think about that shit was passed down by generations. Like. 50, 60 years type shit. This shit, boom. The second I post this, anybody in the world could hear it. So the information of how people around the world and just our species has grown using slaves and all this chains of all these chains of power and deceit. Like the second you find it, like kids test, like that's what I mean. It's in us. Kids just test when they can lie. Like, the first words kids usually say is, like, no. When they comprehend what the meaning is, like, a lot of them just say no. We And they test lies and because they know that they can, like, once they understand what language is, they start to, they start to explore the boundaries of it. And when you realize that you actually, if you can hold a straight face and say a lie, you could just be a fucking liar for real. Like, you could just get away with doing whatever you wanted to. So that's, like, the issue with our reality right now and power and what that really is. Like, that saying, like, knowledge is power. Like, is power beating people up? Is power knowing more than that person? Really, what is power? Is power just, like, electricity itself? Because... We're in such a struggle for for power when at the end of the day, all we want is happiness and contentment, you know? So if we're struggling for, with, for power, with power, then what's, like, what's the end game of that? There really isn't anything. Huh. There's no end game for trying to obtain power. So understanding that, being aware that we have these notions to lie just because we can, even at a young age, then that's what we should be focused on at the young age. Obviously, teach them language and like ABCs and shit like that, but we should be teaching manners and all that type of shit, like for real, for real. I'm not saying the world would be perfect and like, there wouldn't be like jokers and people just like pushing buttons. That's not what I'm saying. That's like pretty much impossible. And even when the playing field is even monetarily, there's still going to be disadvantages to people as far as attraction goes. Like people are still going to be naturally attracted to what they're attracted to. You know, whether like this girl's skinny or that guy's tall or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So if the power was changed from oil and shit to natural from the world, 
just currents and windmills and solar panels charging everything, right? Then we don't have to do all that power struggle for power to own that or harness it because everyone has it. So now if everyone has the power, it's an evil playing equal play evil <laughs> equal playing field. And the people who have the power right now, that scares them because they think that everyone else is just going to take their spot. Like bitch like we're all alive, we're all in a spot. <laughs> we all want to be happy. And this is the thing. Some of us like like control in different ways, you know, like just like certain bitches like being submissives and shit like that. Dudes like it too. Like there's different kinks that everybody has and that's fucking fine. The thing is that a lot of the people don't feel like they have the means or reality to get it. Like this, for instance, like when I have a show and people say they're coming out and they don't or they say they can't because of money, they work five, six, seven days a week, dude, some of these people. A lot, of, like 70 hour weeks, a lot of fucking time. And they don't have the money to spare a $10 ticket at the door. So like you're, you're doing all this work, dude. All this fucking work to not even do anything else at all that you want to do. That being said, if he had the money, she had the money, the time, if they didn't have to work to get the money, they would have been there. So now if everybody in the world had just money and time to do whatever they wanted, everyone would do what they really want to do, and it would just turn into a creative, conscious level up. Now, this is what I mean. Like, people are still going to argue, and they're still going to be... That's minor things, though, you know? It's not like power won't be distributed in different ways. Power right now is money, pretty much, is what I'm saying. So, is power knowledge? Is power other things? Clearly not. And that's why a lot of us are depressed. There's no soul. We have no meaning. If we were just, ant like, this is the thing. We don't, we don't know if flies have a consciousness or not. We don't know if they communicate with language. We don't know, for real, we, don't, we really don't know. So for us to be like conscious and doing this consciously, not just some meat-eating machine that doesn't give a fuck and like this is just what happens now, like, like when I press the space bar and it goes space, it doesn't just fucking draw a fucking dandelion. It goes space. <laughs> That's not us, dude. We're the dandelions. Right now, we're stuck in a space bar. Whoa. This is why podcasts are cool. <laughs> it's just letting your fucking mind rant. But we all want this utopia of happiness. And an example of that, of having everything doesn't mean you'll be happy is is me throwing shows and not enjoying them i make music to have people hear it and connect with people and dance and shit like boom 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 but i wasn't having much fun at the shows you know what i mean so that was an oxymoron in itself so that's my growth right now trying to understand okay it's not about things at all it's not about other people leaving it's about me it's about fucking me being okay with me and now that I'm somewhat okay with me, naturally, other things have just fallen into my life and other things have naturally fallen out. So trying to connect that thought process with everybody having everything they ever wanted, like I said, there's still going to be jealousy, but the difference is the ability to obtain whatever they're jealous of. It'll be way easier to be obtainable. As far as like the neighbor has a trampoline. I want a trampoline. I'm going to go get one. 
well, you got to work at your job for the next two, three weeks and save up, and then you're not going to be able to go out to the show that your friend is throwing because you want to buy a trampoline. And you could die in a car crash in two days and not even get to do any of it. You know what I mean? So us knowing and being aware of how short this life really is and the people in power are always the old ones, they're old as fuck, and their time is done, so like they got to keep the power, and that cycle's just staying there. So it's really weird, dude. It's weird, and it's this is what I always get stuck on. I always get stuck on like not why we're here, not it's what are we doing. <laughs> I don't even care why we're here. I know why. I know why we're here to live, but we're not fully living. A lot of people are. A lot of people are living like a carefree real life but at the end of the day I know a majority majority of us when we lay in our bed are not happy even if it looks like it on the outside it, it's very we're good at faking shit remember what I said lying and shit we fake smile all day we fake communi- communication all day like I was a server so if I'm in a bad mood but I have to serve you I still have to walk in, hello, how are y'all doing? My name's da, da, da I'll be serving you. What would you like to drink? I still have to be nice. I can't be like, what's up, y'all? Like, what do you fucking want? Come on, like, uh, just hurry up so I can get your tip and you can get the fuck out. I can't, I can't talk to you like that. So in a sense, that's a lie. If you really look at it, I'm lying. I'm not showing my true emotion. That's so weird, dude. It's a, it's a trippy inside out thing. This whole thing is. So that's why instead of me looking at the problems of the world as like, we have a problem because this person got a virus. We have a problem because this person started this fight. Like I just said, blocked out all that noise and looked at me, looked in the mirror and said, dude, you you didn't even do this much. You didn't do this. You're not consistent with that. You fall off on this because I have a lot of judgments and opinions about the world but how the fuck could I judge and say I want this and that for other people when I don't do what I want for me you know so a lot of my depression was built off of just me not being me not doing what I really wanted to do and that's my fault and a lot of us are scared to face that a lot of us are scared to face like oh shit it's been my fault the whole time I'm the fucking reason I'm sad. Now, clearly that varies. If you were abused growing up or things like that, that's an issue that the parent dealt with, that they were probably abused. Do you see what I mean? The cycle, psychologically, it's very kind of easy to pinpoint where your issues stem from. But if you have a specific situation where you were like abused or something like that, that's clearly like a different discussion of why you are the way you are you know but you are the way you are and you need to address those you need to be honest with yourself and look in the mirror and say dude you're fucking lazy you do a lot but you're fucking lazy and being honest with yourself about that that's like a smack in the face and then that gets your rudders the motor going a little bit and once you get the engine going, bro, you're on the fucking freeway right now. And now I'm on the freeway. I can decide where to go. I can decide to go off of the stop bus stop for a little bit. I could decide to keep going all the way to Cali. Or I could just, you know, to crash and burn. You know, it's your decision. And I'm deciding to drive this shit around the world. That's a fact. That's how I'm ending it. I'm keeping it short and sweet today. I love you motherfuckers. I'm dropping shit weekly for the rest of my life until I fucking die. I hope something pops soon, dude. Because when I get big, boy, I'm going to fucking be so nice to people. (laughs) I'm going to be giving hugs to everybody, dude. Like, I just want to perform in front of thousands of people and bring my energy and share and feel yours. That's all I want to do. So I don't need anything from you guys but to subscribe here. If you want, follow my shit, but just tell people about my music. Tell people that you love them. That's all I want from you guys. I love you. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm sorry, guys. So I did that podcast last night, which was January 25th.
Today is the 26th of Sunday. And I just saw some news that Kobe Bryant passed away in a, uh, a helicopter crash. So the second I thought about that, I thought about the podcast and kind of how I was talking about my life and doing what I want, trying to be happy. And this ties into that. Do what you guys fucking want when you can, because that's all the time we have. We don't know how we're going to go or when we're going to go or where we're going to go. So every moment you have, just focus it on what brings you joy. Because this literally just happened like 15 minutes ago. I saw TMZ literally tweet it. Like I freshed my feed and it was under a minute that TMZ had posted it. So when I did went to go do all the other research real quick to make sure it was not fake news, there was nothing there. Wikipedia didn't even have it added then. Five minutes later, Wikipedia added it, you know, and everything was, it solidified to me. So you only really think in depth of like what we're doing here when death is around. And I, I've been preaching so much recently about this shit, about what I'm doing. And what I said earlier about accountability, everything I was preaching before I wasn't doing. I'm practicing what I preach now. And I, I'm going to show you guys the proof through me. But like I said, this is why I'm releasing music every fucking week because I don't know when I'm going to go. I don't know if a car can crash into my fucking room when I'm asleep or some shit, you know. So we all have a legacy we want to leave behind. Just make sure you fucking ingrain your path, you know. Not everybody wants to be remembered when they're gone. Some people don't give a fuck about that. That's a selfish thing that I have, wanting to live forever. Re realistically, I wish I could live forever to see how things change and, and grow. But a way that I could be a part of forever is my music and content. So that's the reason for what I even do. So I just wanted to add to the end of this to reiterate what I said. Nah, like, I sounded po like real positive at the end of this when I just listened back to it. Like, tell people you love them for real. Every single fucking day, yo. I just wanted to reiterate that. Live your fucking life. Please. Make yourself better. That will make other people want to be better. And then it'll be a full circle fucking big old hug of love and shit. Because helicopter crashes and like none of us can fucking know when that's going to happen, dude. So we all only really think about what this really is when death is around. So I don't like how death or pain, you have to like experience the darkness to enjoy the light. I hate that shit because it should just be light all the time if you think about it as far as love goes. But just, just do y'all, man. Just like really any negative things you see, whatever you feel negative about, hone in on where that's coming from. Like, focus on where that's stemming from so that you cannot be negative anymore and then replace that with something positive, whether it's a podcast, eating better, whatever it is. But I love you guys. Live your life. I'll talk to you soon.